Well, thank you everyone and welcome. And hopefully you can see my, uh, my picture uh, on the side here. And uh, my name is Megan Primo. I think you're, a lot of you are familiar with me, but uh, this is our uh, math and webinar series. And uh, today, uh, is, as I said, welcome to our experiment. Uh, so Brian has kindly, Brian's, Brian, you've been a member for quite a while now, eh? What would you say? Um, I'd say about three, four years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know you've attended a lot of our sessions, and so often you said, you know what, we should talk about virtual reality. So we finally did it. Um, and then the, I was especially excited because Brian's doing everything. Uh, so we're, he's using his Zoom account. He knows what he's up to. So uh, as a team of co-hosts, we get a bit of a break. Um, but also, I think it's really nice to see how the Zoom space can be used as well as, uh, you know, we do a lot of fun stuff in Adobe. Um, so um, I'll just flag, uh, I'm noticing Nancy's having some sound issues there, Brian. Mm -hmm. And Lauren's, uh, I think they're doing a private chat to work Yeah, again, I'm going to have to get used to it. Someone else deals with all that. I don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. So just a reminder of, um, uh, I know you have to, you, you and Lauren will have to be patient with me to let go of the, you know, back off of the wheels <laughs> on things. We've, we've had a few situations where it hasn't quite gone as we'd hoped, so I'm, I, I, that hesitancy comes in. So I'll do my best to control that impulse. So just a reminder about uh, math in itself, you know, a group um, really bringing facilitators together, sharing with each other, from each other. Um, there's also some connections as well to um, professional opportunities. Um, and these webinars obviously are one part of that. And for those of you who aren't, although most of you are members, but those of you who aren't, um, you know, again, there's a real value even just from the free access to the webinars. Um, you get the recordings afterwards and things like that. Um, there's stuff on there from four or five years ago. I actually went back to watch one on um, World Cafe that Amy Lenzo did because I had to run a World Cafe. So it was really great resource that it was still there and I could go click on it and, you know, see what website she'd suggested and things like that. Um, and even the find the facilitator listing is interesting. Um, you get some leads on potential work, so worth the value. Mm -hmm. Coming up, um, I think we, I saw Mo's on with us today. Mo uh, is going to uh, talk about um, really looking at our facilitation strengths and styles. We've done some initial prep on this, and I know the co-host team is excited about this topic. Really a, a um, good reflection for ourselves of how we function as facilitators and how we think about how we approach it. So um, I encourage you to go register. The registration for that is open and that'll be on February 9th. And then uh, we'll stick to our second uh, Friday of the month uh, in March and April. Haven't quite tidied up titles in that, but Drew Bird is an expert around emotional intelligence who's going to speak a bit with us. And Mike Parker, who's um, I think Nancy, you might have connected me to Mike, um, is uh, from uh, the UK, and he's going to talk about the use of metaphor and imagery, um, again, in our work as facilitators. And there's also the in-person sessions for those of you in the DC area. And all of that, the listings, the registration, can be found through the mathin.org website. So here's us. We have a nice big team of co-hosts now. Um, it really helps because with everyone's busy times and schedules, when we have a meeting, it's now we, you know, we know we get at least four or five bodies there to talk and learn. But of course, the, the star of the show today is Brian. And I, but we have Lauren, um, again, who is going to be my star of the day because she's doing all that technical troubleshooting that I'd often be dealing with. So I'm very happy to have you guys with us today. So Sorry, the last one's at the end. So I'm going to pass it back to you. I'll stop my share here, Brian, and, um, you know, pass the show over to Brian. And uh, I hope everyone has a great experience. And just keep using the chat um, as well as uh, if you need something external, you can email me. And um, we're good to go. Thanks, Brian. Cool. Thank you, Megan. All right. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we kick off. Uh, and again, my name is Brian Tarallo. Uh, my partner, Lauren Green, is going to be sketchnoting. And since you probably want to see her sketch notes more than you want to see my ugly mug, um, I'm just going to uh, spotlight her video just for a minute while she's getting started. So a little bit of housekeeping before we kick off. Um, so we are trying Zoom which is an alternative to Adobe for no other reason than I happen to like Zoom and it works well for me. So uh, we're gonna be, first rule is we're gonna be patient. Uh, we're gonna be patient with each other in technology. We have different bandwidth issues. We have different uh, uh, levels of technical savvy. And so if you get booted, just click back in. 
Um, we're also going to be experimenting with a few different kinds of collaborative software out there, everything from Google Docs to some much more interesting and exotic stuff. Uh, and so what that means is, is that we may be typing on top of each other, and that's kind of the same effect when two people start speaking at the same time. So uh, hit a couple of returns and so that you're not typing on top of yourselves. Um, a couple things about Zoom. So we are going to be recording this, and later on Megan is going to share out some details for how uh, this video is going to be recorded and shared out. Um, everyone by default is on mute, which I'll go ahead and do that now. But you also have the uh, the ability to unmute yourself. Although if you abuse that, I will turn off that feature. So Brian, I'm gonna I'm gonna abuse it right away. You're so gonna have to turn me off. Um, <laughs> I did. I just want to reiterate because we've had a few more people join, and I do yeah. see. So because we are recording, you're and you are welcome when you need to to turn your video, your audio on. Just be aware that you are being recorded, and we are sharing that recording with the MAP and membership. So if you'd prefer to not have your image. Um, uh, included in the recording, you can uh, turn your video off. There's a stop video option. Um, and uh, it's just more that FYI that you will be recorded and we will be using it. So if you choose to stay on the video. Thanks. So thanks for that, Megan. And how did she do that just now? If you choose to unmute yourself, you can go down to the lower left hand corner of your screen. You should see something that says mute right now. You can click on that to unmute yourself. Um, Nancy, this has nothing to do with your audio. Hopefully you're able to get that straightened out. Um, you can also, if you've joined by phone, you can hit star six on your touchtone phone to unmute yourself. Um, as Megan was saying before we got started, I'd encourage you to play around with Zoom a little bit. You're not going to break anything. You're not going to get in my way. Um, this is a little bit different from Adobe where you kind of sit back and just sort of let it happen. So a few things that I would point out to you. In the upper right hand corner, there should be a thing that either looks like nine boxes or looks like a little like a movie clicker thingy. Try clicking on that just to see what kind of views you like. Um, you can also pin videos if you want to pin Lauren's video as she's doing some sketch notes. Um, you can really dial in on whatever's interesting to you. Okay. Um, and I'll go a little bit more into some of the, um, uh, the other options that Zoom has. But for right now, um, I'm going to unpin Lauren's video. Okay, so welcome everybody to virtual facilitation. Um, so just right off the get-go, what I'd like to say is, is that we're all facilitators, and I think this would be really super boring if you did nothing but hear from me today. Um, and so what I'd really like uh, this to be is a forum where you can actually share your favorite tools for facilitating remote groups. Um, and I'll, we're um, going to use some methods uh, in order to be able to do that. We're going to use some virtual facilitation methods in order to talk about virtual facilitation, which I know is meta, but I think, it, I think it'll work. Um, okay, so who am I? My name is Brian Tarallo, and I'm a graphic facilitator, and I'm happy to say a certified professional facilitator. Um, I'm also the managing director of Lizard Brain Solutions, and these are just a couple snapshots of who we are and what we do. So our objectives for today, so somebody's already playing around with the, the annotate, which is awesome. Um, our objectives for today is to see and actually try out some technologies for virtual facilitation. Um, and that means, I'm sorry, techniques. And so that means technologies, but also some best practices. There are some things to know about virtual facilitation that set it apart from facilitation in the room. Um, and so our other objective is to harvest the knowledge that's in the room. We as facilitators, our golden rule is we believe that the knowledge is in the room. Um, and I would really like to draw on the richness of the experience of the people that I see before me right now. So a couple principles. Um, like I said, this is going to be different than your usual math and webinar. And so you can either choose to be on cruise control or you can take the wheel. And here's what I mean by that. Um, if you want to sit back and just kind of watch the show, nothing wrong with that. But if you want to roll your sleeves up, try some of these things out. Uh, click into some of the different tools and methods and um, act as a participant and contribute your knowledge, you're going to have the opportunity to do that too. Um, now, along with that, we're going to have to switch back and forth between different tools and windows. So get really good uh, at switching back and forth between Zoom and whatever internet browser is uh, you prefer. Okay, So it may be a little bit clunky as we're switching back and forth. And if you get frustrated with it, Again, you can just take your hands off the wheel and be an observer. But I'd really like as many people to participate as possible. Um, one of the cool things about virtual facilitation is that it's almost infinitely scalable. You can bring lots of different people in on it. We're going to be on the balcony and the dance floor. So here's what I mean by that. That's a principle that comes from Ron Heifetz. Um, and in this context, what it means is I'm going to use 
virtual facilitation methods to teach virtual facilitation methods. So it's like, woo, you know. So um, we're gonna try some stuff out and then we'll go up to the balcony and say, okay, here's what was going on there, okay? Um, and so what that means is that if you choose to participate, if you wanna take the wheel, I'm just gonna throw you into stuff and send you links. Um, and what I would hope is that you would trust that, you know, you could be your whole self, participate as you normally would, um, and then I'll back out and say, okay, here's why we did it like that. Um, and are there any other principles? And here's how I'd like to collect that. If you want to go ahead and use the chat, you can include any other principles that you'd like to, to have in here. And here's how you do that, okay? So on Zoom, um, I talked about how you can join audio, but there's a chat window, chat bubble that looks like a little talkie bubble with three dots in it. If you don't see it, chances are your screen is too small. Maybe you're looking at this on an old Mac SE or something like that, but uh, you'll have to click on a right arrow to make that, uh, that talk bubble show up. And that'll give you access to chat. Um, and Lauren and I are gonna be monitoring that for the rest of this. So as I said before, you know, uh, we are recording. We'll share details on how to actually access that recording later, use the chat, to ask questions and to get links. We're gonna be pasting links into that pretty regularly. Um, and as I said before, you play around with the speaker view and the gallery view, and that's in the upper right-hand corner, okay? Okay, so to kick us off, um, what I'd like to do is actually, I think is a good facilitation method uh, that works both in the room and virtually, okay? Um, and that's to center yourself. So what I'd like to invite you to do is to first start by removing one distraction. And if that means putting your phone aside, putting it on mute, closing the door, hanging a do not disturb sign out there, um, turning off email, but do one thing that allows you to be more present uh, and engaged. And then the other thing that I'd like to invite you to do is to grab a sticky note or any scrap piece of paper that you've got uh, and write a brief statement of purpose just for yourself. This isn't something that, this is something that you're not gonna share, it's just for you. Um, what do you want to get out of this today? What's your purpose in joining this? Okay, cool. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to grab a sticky and just write a kind of a centering statement for themselves. Um, if you'd like to, go ahead and uh, type into the chat um, why you might want to ask people to center themselves first. Okay, so here's some of the things that I'm seeing to focus attention, stop the multi multitasking, that there's a lot of distraction in our lives. Um, the present is a gift. We shouldn't waste it. I love that, John. John, nice to see you. You should be doing this class, like teaching it. Um, center to allow people to focus on the task at hand. Uh, target a learning goal. Bring everyone present. Set an intention. Yeah. So the reason that I wanted to kick off with this is for all of those reasons. Um, and also to say that just because you're not in the room doesn't mean that you can't use a lot of the same methods that you're used to in the room. Um, inviting someone to center themselves is a good thing to do you know, when you're in the room with folks. There's no reason you couldn't do that here, okay? All right, so to kick us off, we're gonna do a, a, a light icebreaker um, and to do what's called who's in the room, okay? And to do who's in the room, I'm gonna invite you to access our first tool. Now this one is called Board Thing. Um, it's a free tool. I'll go ahead and paste the link in the window. Um, and what I would say before you before you click into it, um, it's going to ask you to register. You don't have to do that. Um, all you have to do is to select enter as a guest and think of board thing as virtual sticky notes, which are awesome. Um, and all you have to do is you have to double click anywhere in the white space to create a sticky note. Sticky note. Um, and what I'd like you to do is to type your name. Um, and what is it that you call yourself? Let's say that you're introducing yourself to, you know, you're at a holiday party or something, and somebody says, what do you do? Um, do you call yourself a facilitator, an instructor, a consultant? Not everybody knows what a facilitator is. Few people know what a, you know, graphic facilitator is. So what do you call yourself? And while you're accessing that, if you are in that uh, cruise control mode, I'll go ahead and switch my screen around so you can follow the action. So Carol, the way that you add a note is just to double click anywhere in the white space and then um, start typing. You wanna, and just in case you um, maybe mistakenly hit the pencil or the eraser, uh, make sure that you've got, you're clicked on this nice um, yellow color. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing a little bit of organizing and grouping. So I'm seeing a management consultant, uh, another consultant over here. Um, so I'm seeing some coaching happen. Um, facilitator, coach, trainer, uh, facilitator, 
So there's like consultant and facilitator. Uh-huh. Graphic facilitator. Oh, that's me. Uh, coach, global consultant, yeah. I help leaders understand the invisible organizational dynamics that impede people's performance. That's awesome. Change facilitators, I'm gonna put facilitators over here. Uh, professional facilitators, yeah. Facilitator, coach. Hey Brian, um, just a question for you. Can, can sticky notes be edited? Yeah, you yeah, just double click on them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then changing the color of the sticky note. Yeah, so if you were to, hang on a second, let me finish what I'm writing. I have to do this with a mouse, unfortunately. So there's facilitators. Right, so to change this, the color of it, um, what you wanna do is um, open it up if you're looking at my shared screen. Uh, open up the sticky note and then in the lower left-hand corner, um, there's a little box right next to done and you can click on that in order to change the color. So I'm seeing facilitator, I'm saying coach, Actually, that's consultant. So Brian, it's uh -huh. really weird. On the screen share in Zoom, I'm seeing far fewer cards than I'm seeing on board thing. Uh huh. You probably have a bigger screen than what I've allowed. So I can actually make this bigger, but I didn't want it to be so large that there are some screens that are a lot smaller than this. It's still quite a different view. Okay. And that happens. That's one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that people have different systems. Um, so I'm going to keep it small just in case we've got folks that have smaller views. Okay. You're just missing a ton of the cards. Okay. So here's, That's what's I, can, weird. I can zoom out too. Hey, Brian. Mm -hmm. Can you share what, what are the directions? I just got in and I had a hard time finding the, uh, the meeting. So hey there. Well, thanks for coming. So what, what I'd like you to do, whoever said that, is just to double click anywhere in the white space and that will create a sticky note. Okay. And you, create, you write your name and then whatever it is you call yourself um, to you know, the unwashed masses, <laughs> to people that are not necessarily savvy in terms of what a facilitator is. So I've got social change catalyst, maybe that's kind of in the consultant. Great. Hey Brian, <clears throat> this is Linda Howard. Um, the other thing that I, I see is that on the screen share in Zoom, I see the triangle facilitator, consultant, coach. On board thing, I don't. Mm -hmm. There may be a bit of a delay on that. Okay, I don't see any any handwritten mm -hmm. things. And Brian, Brian, I'm only seeing your screen. I, I don't see something where I can double click and get a. Uh, yeah, so let me let me uh, let me just say a couple of things. So if if you joined late, I had posted a, a link in the chat so that you could actually access this and wow. and uh, and erase it. Um, one thing I, I will say just to keep us moving, and I apologize for this, but I really want to. Um, there's a lot that I'd like to show you. Um, I'm not going to be doing uh, uh, technical support. So if there's something that doesn't look exactly the same, um, you know, just be be patient with the technology. Um, if I was troubleshooting um, everybody, we we wouldn't get through all the content, and I, I trust that everybody would, you know, prefer to, to see what we've got here. Okay. The reason that you would use board thing, um, and I'll just tell you, is to do a quick harvest, uh, kind of like what we were doing here, um, where there's where you'd like to do some affinity clustering and some grouping on that. Okay. Um, so again, this is it's a great tool. It's free. Uh, you know, I'd encourage you to to play around with it when you've got time. But the same way that you would use uh, sticky notes and clusters, um, would that might be something that you could use for board thing. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop the share now. If you want to click out of uh, board thing and um, join me back on the um, uh, the PowerPoint, uh, actually, which is to say, as I'm sharing the screen, um, I'll go ahead and move on. I'll show you a couple of other things that are out there. Um, so let me first say this one. So this is a, this is kind of a new thing for me. I, I always railed against PowerPoint. Um, I, I thought that PowerPoint honestly made groups stupider. Um, and I gotta say in this last latest version of uh, PowerPoint, I really like what they've done with it because they've made it a lot more uh, interactive and accessible to groups. Okay. Um, so uh, I say that because one of the things that's actually really cool about it is, is it's got this new button called Ink Replay. 
Um, and that's what's going on here. And if you've seen those kind of high-speed whiteboard animations, um, you can use PowerPoint uh, to redraw um, a model, uh, a diagram, or something that maybe you did with a group uh, in order to bring others into it. Um, and so that's, that's at the balcony level. On the dance floor level, um, here's a couple of ways you could think about virtual facilitation. Uh, there's those methods and technologies that are out there that are cheap and free, kind of like board thing. Um, and then there's the ones that are really expensive, okay? Uh, things like virtual reality. And then there's the methods that are heavy, which is to say they offer a whole lot of flexibility, a lot of different options. Um, and then there are the ones that are pretty light that offer kind of few capabilities. Um, yeah, and thanks for that, Lauren. We're, we're looking at uh, ink replay on the draw tab. Um, so we just played around with board thing. That one's totally free. Um, there's a lot that you can do with it. You can actually take those clustered notes and add dot votes to it, which is pretty cool. Um, there's things like Google Docs, also free, which we'll play around with later. Um, then there's the different methods uh, for just bringing people together, like uh, Adobe Connect, Zoom, or even using something like a document camera, like what um, uh, uh, Lauren's doing for her sketch notes. Um, there's plenty of free Adobe and Zoom-like uh, options that are out there. Zoom actually has a free uh, trial version. Um, or you could just use a webcam. Um, and I think that all of this counts as virtual facilitation. Um, even if you're just using something as simple as a conference call uh, and using something like Google Docs where other people can, uh, can dial into it and, and, uh, and take a look. What's not here uh, is the one is one way transmitting of ideas. So this would be the kinds of things like you know Facebook Live uh, or uh, you know when you're actually streaming or YouTube um, because that's one way. And I don't I don't necessarily consider that facilitation where you don't have uh, some two way communication going on. Okay. So I think all of this counts as virtual facilitation. It's virtual if it's happening and uh, not everyone is uh, in the same room. And I'll just say anecdotally from my own perspective, I've been doing a lot more virtual facilitation uh, just because budgets are tight. Uh, we've got you know, uh, continuing resolutions, we've got a possibly an upcoming sequestration, who knows, and travel budgets are pretty tight right now for my clients. And so I've been getting a lot more requests for virtual facilitation. Okay? So this is just something for you to, um, to, to think about in, in terms of the way that you think about virtual facilitation. Okay, so let's try another one. Um, so in this case, I would like, again, if you've decided to take the wheel and, and you're not in cruise control, um, I would like you to join me on Google Docs. I'll go ahead and paste a link into chat right now. Uh, so this is going to everyone. Um, now, everybody, if, assuming that you don't have some sort of weird firewall restriction, uh, you should be able to join me. Um, yep, I'm starting to see a whole bunch of people show up. And so what I would ask is, how is it that you define virtual facilitation? You just saw my definition for it, uh, which is you know, anything that happens that's not in the room. Um, but how would you define it, or what could it be? Um, and as I said before, you know, we're going to be typing on top of each other, so click anywhere uh, where there's an empty bullet. Maybe give yourself a nice uh, like a return. Um, and just start typing. So I love what I'm saying here. Um, I will tell you, this is the first time I've seen this many people work on one Google Doc at the same time. <laughs> and as I said, it can be a little clunky. Uh, it's the, uh, this is the digital equivalent of people interrupting each other. <laughs> but what, what will happen is that if you kind of take your hands off the wheel, um, participants will fix their own typos, errors, or over types, things like that. Um, what I really like about Google Docs is that it's open and available to anybody. You saw how fast it was to get into this versus something like board thing. Um, and what's cool about this is that you can harvest a whole bunch of information all at once um, without anything like Zoom or Adobe Connect. Uh, you can um, uh, just have a conference call going on and say, hey, folks, can you join me on Google Docs as a way to get it? Um, so I'm really liking what I'm seeing here. So process like World Cafe, open space, engagement, you know, supporting clients in participatory meetings, screen sharing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there is a bit of a danger there to overtype. You have to be careful not to um, uh, crash somebody else's words. I'm seeing a question from Linda. Does everyone have to have a Google account? Um, so answer is no to that. You see up in the upper right-hand corner how we have anonymous armadillo, anonymous camel, anonymous beaver, all that stuff. If you don't have a Google uh, account, um, 
that's okay. It'll just sign you in as anonymous. As if you do have a Google account, you can let people know um, who you are. Okay. One thing I would say about Google Docs when you're using this with uh, federal clients, sometimes they have restrictions about uh, using Google Docs or not. Okay. So I'll give this just another one so that you all can finish up your last couple of thoughts. I love what I'm seeing here, by the way. This is great. Okay, feel free to keep typing if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and move us on to the next thing. Yep, Carol, you probably work for the government. You must have a firewall restriction. Um, yeah, chances are if you can't access Google Docs, um, it's wherever you're joining us from. A bank, oh, even worse, yeah. They've got things wound very tight over there. Yeah, Google, and again, with any one of these technologies, you're always gonna run into a challenge, whether it's bandwidth, uh, like what Brooke was pointing out, or you know somebody who's behind a firewall and they can't access it. So always have a backup. Um, if it doesn't work, and in, in the case of Carol, if there was something that she wanted to, you know, type into the chat, you as a facilitator, you could um, just pick that up, uh, and then um, uh, uh, you could pick it up and then just type it in for her. Um, okay, so here's what I'm going to have you do. So I'm going to launch a poll. Uh, Amy, you're absolutely right. That's only mine. Uh, until now, okay. Now everybody should have should have access to a poll. Um, on, if you go back to Zoom, if you don't mind leaving the Google Doc, yep, some of you are already putting your answers in. So the question is, for you, how much virtual facilitation do you do? Yeah, John had a great insight. It's been my experience that one of the first questions we need to ask as a facilitator to our clients is what tools they use. Definitely, if they've got a way of doing it already, uh, you wanna piggyback off of whatever it is that they're already doing. So the nice thing about Zoom is that you can uh, inject polls um, like this. They have to be set up in advance. Um, and I'm seeing a nice bell curve start to show up here. Uh, so they have to be uh, answered in advance, or so, excuse me, uh, uh, set up in advance. The other nice thing that I really like about um, Zoom is that you can actually, as a facilitator, you can put people into breakout groups. Um, you can either assign people or have them opt in, sort of like open space. We're not gonna do that here. Um, but it's a really great feature to do the same thing that you would normally do in the room. Okay, we've got about 82% of people who have weighed in and shared on the poll. Um, Linda, no, you're not seeing the entire poll feature. In just a second, after I close the poll, you'll be able to see the results. Going once, twice, okay. And I'm ending the poll, and so here now I'll share the results. You should have a little window that just popped up that said, here's where we're at. So it looks like uh, about half of you said that you do some facilitation, uh, but most of your facilitation is live and in the room. Yeah, and I think that that's typical. Um, also, I've seen some folks that really said about half, uh, and even most of it uh, is virtual. Okay, so to you that have used virtual facilitation and done it, I'm really excited about hearing what you have to say. Um, again, if you're just hearing from me, <laughs> um, for the rest of the morning, this will get pretty boring. So thanks for sharing that. So I'll go back to the PowerPoint now. Okay, so I'd like to try another method. Um, and for me, when I was learning virtual facilitation, the big insight that I had was that pretty much anything you can do in the room, um, short of reading people's body language and tone of voice, um, you can do virtually. Um, and to demonstrate that, I want to do uh, a method that's called brain writing. Um, now, for those of you that are not familiar with brain writing, the way that it works when you're in the room uh, is that somebody writes down a problem or an issue on a note card. The note goes to another person who writes down a possible solution. Um, they pass it on uh, to the next person who writes another possible solution, et cetera. And then it goes back to the original person um, who said, you know, who, who had the, uh, the, initial, the initial issue. Um, and Kathy, yes, the PowerPoint is not on full screen. That is on purpose. Um, just because I like to be able to show off the tools and the navigation. One of the things that drives me nuts about PowerPoint is that you can't see where it's going and how long it is. Um, so I like to not use the presenter view just so that you see, hey, we're at slide 11 out of 17. We're almost done. We're almost out of here. Yay. Um, so it's just a personal preference for me. So here's what I'm going to say. Um, I'll go ahead and post another link into the chat window. And this is going to be using um, Google Sheets. Now, you've already experienced some of the challenges uh, with um, virtual facilitation. 
And so what I'd like you to do is to use the Google Sheet doc that I, uh, link that I just sent out there to on the far left in column A is to write down some of the problems that you've either seen today or you've had in the past with virtual facilitation. Um, and then what I'd like you to do is to bounce around. Um, off to the right, either answering your own question or uh, giving a solution to somebody else's question. Um, go ahead and see if you can come up with some solutions to these problems. Yeah, so I saw a question from Wynn. Um, I'm not Google Docs savvy. This looks like an Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Um, so here's uh, what, what um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with Google Docs, there's Google Docs, which is the uh, like the Word version of it. Um, there's Google Sheets, which is what we're using right now. Um, and then there's actually Google Slides, which uh, we're gonna use a little bit later on, um, which is like the, the Google equivalent of uh, a PowerPoint. Um, and they all allow uh, this kind of uh, collaborative interaction on it. It, it, is, it is basically an Excel spreadsheet. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, some of you have probably noticed some of the advantages of going up to the balcony for a second. Some of you have probably already noticed the uh, couple of the advantages of Google Sheets. Um, it's a lot tougher to type on top of each other because uh, if you have a cell highlighted, um, uh, you can see that. And so you know, it's, it's less likely that you can actually uh, overwrite somebody else's idea um, as what happens in Google Docs. So I'm seeing some really great um, uh, problems uh, uh, that have come out and some really great um, solutions that have come out too. Um, so from Brooke, have you found any costless mind mapping tools? Yes, most definitely. Uh, FreeMind is my favorite one. Uh, it's F-R-E-E-M-I-N-D, uh, it's FreeMind. Yep, thanks Lauren, she was a step ahead of me on that one. Um, so FreeMind is an option for free mind mapping. There is not a collaborative version to it, but what you could do as a facilitator um, is you could just launch Zoom uh, and you know, harvest from people uh, verbally, and then you could write down what it is that they have to say. Okay, so this is really cool. And I'm seeing a lot of overlap too. So one of the things that you might do, so I'm, I'm saying, for example, lack, lack of participation, uh, people not participating, people not engaged. Um, and some great solutions to that. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of the same things that we do in the room are the same things that you might do um, virtually and online, okay? So again, just a light touch on this uh, so that you can experience a little bit. Um, and if you don't mind joining me back on Zoom now uh, with the PowerPoint, we'll go on to the next thing. Now, this is, this one's gonna, this, is, this one's, you're either gonna hate this or it's gonna blow your mind. It's gonna be your favorite thing ever. Um, <laughs> when I first started facilitating, we had this thing that was called, um, oh, I think it was, uh, what was it called? Not tipping point? Maybe it was called tipping point, turning point, something like that. But you pull out this case of all of these tiny little uh, uh, remote control devices. Um, uh, some of you might remember that. I think it was called turning point. Um, and what you do is you pass this out to however many participants you'd have, um, and you'd get them to um, you know, answer a poll that was on a PowerPoint. So in the day of uh, everybody having a device in their pocket, um, there's this new service out there that's called Mentimeter. And so here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Those of you that have smartphones, um, go ahead and pull up whatever your smartphone's web browser is. Um, go to www.menti.com, M-E-N-T-I, and enter in code 86466, okay? And it should take you to another poll. Now, what's really cool about this is that you're not, you, you can do this in the room where you just have people pull their phones out. If you don't have a smartphone, you can invite people to open up a web browser and do exactly the same thing. Um, and as, as I said, if you don't have a web browser, then you're hopeless and I can't help you. I don't even know what you're doing here. How are you joining this thing? So go ahead and go to menti.com and I'll do a new share so you can see what that looks like from the facilitator side. Um, and again, do this on your phones. Yeah, so Becky suggested poll everywhere. That's another great one. Mm -hmm. um, I will say Menti's got kind of a freemium option. So you have so many polls that you, uh, uh, can use for free, and then you know they they char start charging you. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna trust that everybody's answering honestly on this one. That you know, great. I'm learning a lot. We need to do we needed to do this. Very cool. Good, but it's tedious but necessary. It's a grind. Yeah, it can be a little bit tricky to switch back and forth. 
Um, again, what I would say is that there's a switching cost to this. Um, uh, you know, anytime that you're pushing people to go back and forth between different platforms, different, um, different uh, web pages, um, there's a cost to that, right? And so you're, you're asking people to make a mental shift from one thing to the next. Um, Pragmatically, I use pretty much one or two methods um, over the course of any virtual meeting. At this point, you all have seen like six or seven, right? That's a lot. But we are doing uh, an overview. And so I wanted to show you as much as possible. So, you know, consequently, there's going to be a lot more, more uh, shifting that's there. Okay. Um, I'm really happy that nobody clicked. I hate this. I don't want to be here. <laughs> so thanks for that. Um, so the cool thing about Mentimeter is, is that now that I've got it, um, I can go ahead and publish this to, um, uh, to a PowerPoint. I could, if I wanted to, right there, click present. Um, and then let's say that I was using a laptop uh, in a room or even just like right here, I could go ahead and stream that out. Um, so Mo asked, how is Menti different from a poll? Um, it's pretty much the same thing. I just wanted to give you the option to see what it is. The big difference is that um, Menti uh, uses um, uh, uh, it's a use your own device. Okay. So let's say that you were actually in the room and you had a hundred people. You could just have everybody pull out their phone. And in this case, you could do a pulse check, like what, like what I just did, a process check, um, or have them answer, uh, any other question that you want to do, um, without having to invest in something like turning point. Okay. Uh, question, how do you get this from the phone to PowerPoint? Um, so Lauren said that there wasn't a way. I think there is, um, and it's, it's right here. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to lose this screen. Um, but there is a way that you can actually take this and copy paste it back into the PowerPoint. Okay. Um, Brian, did you set up this questionnaire in advance? Yes, I did. Um, this is a kind of a standard questionnaire that I always have out there. Um, just to do a process check and kind of see how we're doing. Um, it's anonymous, so you know people can give me some on-the-fly feedback. Um, I did see that 9% of people said uh, I could use a break. Unfortunately, we don't have a break programmed into this. Um, however, <laughs> uh, if you want to go ahead and stand up and go take a break, uh, if you need to you know, uh, fill up your coffee, there's no way that I can tell. That's a challenge with virtual facilitation. Okay, going back to the, um, uh, going back to the PowerPoint. Okay. All right, so this one, um, we're going to do this a little bit differently because there was just a Java update and it kind of hosed the way that I usually uh, do vi visual templates. Um, so those of you that are familiar with visual templates, you know, there's the great ones that come out of, uh, out of the Grove. Um, you can also use Google Slides uh, in order to have people collaborate on visual templates. Now, what I would say about this is that this is... Um, uh, this is even a little bit more clunky um, than using Google Docs um, because, well, you'll see it in a minute. Um, I would only use this for small groups, or what I would do is have um, you know people just post their answers directly into the chat. Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a try. Um, I posted the the uh, uh, the link into the chat, so you can go ahead and uh, and, and access that now. I'll also switch my screen over so that you can be on cruise control if you prefer to do it that way. Um, and what I would say is, is that if you would prefer, um, what you can do is just answer, uh, you know, go ahead and, and answer the question, which is, thinking about your organization or client, what would be the strengths, problems, opportunities, and threats to introducing more uh, virtual facilitation? Um, you can either type that into the chat or just type it directly into, um, into the boxes here. And you'll see what I mean about this being a lot more clunky. I would never do it with as many people as we've got online, you know, groups of say, you know, 12, yeah, you can already see the overtyping happening. Uh, but with groups of 8, 10, 12, this works fine. Yeah, and Nancy actually demonstrated, for those of you that are in the, uh, um, uh, the Google Slides right now, she demonstrated how you can use things like comments um, to maybe capture things that don't necessarily fit into the template. Yeah, I love this first threat. Our competitors are way beyond us on this already. Yeah, absolutely right. That, that's a, a great way to say, hey, we need to uh, we need to get on, on board with this. Okay, and you can already start to see some of the challenges um, doing this particular one on a, in, a, in a group. Um, you know, the same way that somebody might, you know, put a sticky in the wrong place, it's, it's pretty much the same thing that might happen here. So you, you kind of have to be monitoring yep, and cleaning up as you go. Okay, I'll let you go ahead and continue to um, add to that. Um, I got to remember, yep, thank you, Linda, for that. Don't forget to spell or share the phone exercise. I looked up menti.com. It's actually spelled M-E-N-T-I, M-E-N-T-I. 
to get to menti.com. Um, all right, the way that Nancy added a comment in the upper right-hand corner, there's a button right there, it should say comments. Um, and you can, uh, when you click on that, there's a little, looks like a talk bubble with a plus on it. So you can just say, add comments here. And that's a great way of capturing stuff that, again, may not fit into the constraints of a, uh, uh, of a visual template. Okay, cool. So feel free to continue using this. Um, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so the way that Megan kicked this off is she said what, what brought us here is that I had done a, a demo for her and a couple of other people um, using virtual reality. Um, so here's, here's the big caveat. Um, if this bakes your noodle, if this is too much for you, what we've done so far, you definitely do not want to do virtual reality. Um, it, it really pushes uh, people um, into, uh, you know, maybe doing things and using technologies in ways that they maybe have never seen before. Um, having said that, I think it is, it's the next generation of virtual facilitation. Um, I'm so excited about what I'm seeing happen um, in virtual reality. And so let me just kind of do a light touch on some of the technologies that are out there. Um, Noda mind mapping, Brooke had asked about uh, mind mapping software. Um, Noda mind mapping is a, uh, it's, it's a mind mapping tool. Um, now, if you're like me, uh, you tend to run out of space on the page really quickly when you do a mind map, just because there's so much information to it. What's awesome about uh, virtual reality is that you can create 3D mind maps that have limitless space to them. You can just expand in, in however far you can. Um, tilt Brush, so Tilt Brush is a three-dimensional drawing program. Um, There's some really amazing videos out there, and for me, Tilt Brush was the thing that really got me into, uh, into virtual reality. Um, and you can see me, and I got a little picture of Mariana there where I was doing the demo for her. Um, but the same way that you could uh, do some graphic facilitation and record digging on the wall, you can do it in virtual reality. And again, it has the same advantage of um, immersing people in tons of different uh, information and ideas. Um, so those three in the middle there, those are examples of Tilt Brush. Down in the lower left-hand corner where I've got the lab, um, that's a, a, a virtual reality um, uh, software that puts people into immersive environments. And so let's say you were doing a visioning exercise. Wouldn't it be cool if they were standing on the top of a mountain um, or if they were reflecting, maybe they were looking at a starry sky. Um, if they were coming up with a process, what if they were actually inside um, uh, a machine shop uh, or inside of a factory? Um, a couple more that I've, I've got here highlighted and we can, you know, if, you, if you're interested in virtual reality, you can look me up later on this one. I'd love to give you a demo of this. Um, I use virtual reality a lot for complicated facilitation approaches. So this one in the bottom right here, the black and white one, um, that is a, a VR model of a very complicated um, three-day facilitation. You can see how we use um, a, a metaphor of a room with the different charts around it as an analogy for the different processes um, that the, uh, uh, that the uh, participants were gonna go through. I did this because my client was not getting the logical flow of the three days just from the, the facilitation guide that I've come up with. But in putting it into VR and, and literally walking him through what the experience was gonna be like, um, he was able to come up with a strong mental model so that you know, he, could, he could follow what the, the approach was. One that I just found out about yesterday, this is happening so fast that uh, it's tough to keep up with, but there's this one that's called Masterpiece VR, which not only does it allow for the drawing that Tilt Brush will do, um, but it also allows for sculpture, and even more interesting than that, it allows for multiple people to draw at the same time. Currently, Tilt Brush doesn't allow you to do that. It's one user at a time. Um, yesterday, I jumped into Masterpiece VR, and I was drawing um, with four different people, and it was fantastic. Um, finally, the last one that I'll talk about is Alt Space. Um, those of you that were fami are familiar with, with Second Life, um, it's similar to that. And there are already, um, if you're not familiar with it, just think of it as having virtual avatars where you can join people in a virtual room and have conversations. Um, there are already Alt Space meetups that are happening, and I've done three um, Alt Space uh, facilitations, and I was really happy with what came out of it. So that's really next generation type stuff. I don't want to push you too far. I feel like I push you already a little bit with some of the things that I've showed you. But if you're interested in that, um, you know, feel free to reach out to either Lauren and I, and we can give you a demo and talk about how you might be able to use virtual reality. 
Hey, Brian. Yes, ma'am. Um, just had a couple questions around VR in the chat that maybe, I think maybe you want to answer these before you move on. Um, yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, definitely. So I'll, uh, I'll work backwards. Uh, let's see what I've got um, So look, look at Nancy's uh, questions there. The first one is, uh, what are the financial investments needed for a group to embrace VR? Yeah, definitely. So I'll tell you how much it cost me. I was kind of an early adopter, so it was expensive. Um, it costs uh, um, uh, $800 for the VR uh, hardware itself, which is to say the goggles, the light stations, um, and then the, the ones for you to, to control it, and then another 1200 bucks for the computer. So 2000 altogether. Um, that was just a replacement computer for me, you know, so I use it as my, my day to day computer. And I also got a top of the line uh, VR rig that allows what's called room scale, um, which is the ability to actually walk through a space. Um, most VR, um, although they're moving into room scale, most VR uh, only allows you to uh, look and not actually move. If you want to uh, move around in a space, you have to use like an Xbox controller. Excellent. Um, other questions that stood so, out to you? Uh, mm -hmm. Just one more question. Um, I'm just going to keep it around the VR because I know there's a lot of questions coming in. So this will be the last one and then we can um, head on. Uh, so last one from Nancy is the difference between 3D rendering and VR is that the participants get into the rendering. Does that make sense? Um, I would guess I need to understand that a little bit more. So 3D <laughs> rendering. So if you're talking about like building a 3D model um, on a flat screen, um, like maybe an Autodesk or something like that, you're still looking at it at a flat screen. Um, the difference is with virtual reality, you have stereoscopic goggles that you put on. Um, which give you the illusion that you're looking at, uh, that, that you actually see 3D, similar as if, if you're looking at a, uh, like a 3D movie. I don't know if, that's, if that exactly answers your question. Yeah, goggles helps, okay, cool. Yes, it does, thank you. No worries. Um, any other questions on VR before so, we move on? Um, and then just one, let's see, so do, what about VR in the iPhone 10? Does that give you access to these tools? I don't know if you can do VR with an iPhone 10. Yeah, I don't, that's an excellent question. Hang yeah, on a that's second. one of the big selling points for it is that it's virtual reality. So I'm just curious. Sorry, I put my uh, I put my headset down just for a second. So I'm going to start my video again and stop my share so that I can show you something. Um, all right. So this is anybody seen this before? Yeah, seeing some nods. So this is Google Cardboard. Okay, it's probably the cheapest VR viewer um, you could possibly think of. You open this up. You take your phone. You slap it in there like that. Okay. Um, and you know you can see things in, in 3D. So if, if that's what uh, the iPhone 10 is doing, this is an iPhone 6, I'm kind of behind. Uh, if that's what the iPhone 10 is doing, awesome. I, I haven't seen it yet, I don't think I could talk to it. I'm wondering if anybody else has. Um, and you can either put that in the chat. Mm -hmm. I have one. I almost feel like you could do a whole webinar on, on virtual reality. <laughs> uh, so I'm seeing, so Amy's like thumbs up, yeah, okay. So maybe later. Um, I did pitch that to math and they said, no, no, you know, let's, 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 you know, let's do something a little bit broader. So, yeah. Um, so back to the, the Google Cardboard. Let me tell you what, what this is. So it's, it's a very cheap VR viewer where your phone actually acts like the screen. Okay. And most of the VR headsets that are out there operate like that. You take a, a smartphone and you drop it like the one that you see if, you, if you're shopping at Marshall's and they've got one in the discount, it's going to be something like this, right? Where you actually use your own, um, phone. Uh, yeah, Lauren, thanks for capturing Google Cardboard. I've had mixed results with this. Um, I, the, the results, I, occasionally, I had the idea early on that these things cost 10 bucks a pop. I could buy, you know, 20 of them, mail them out to participants, and they'd all be able to sit there and be a part of the environment. The, the problem is, is that the resolution is not there. Um, and more than that, the bandwidth is not there. You really have to have a, a really solid connection, because what you don't want to have happen is somebody moving a virtual uh, camera around and then everybody here gets seasickness, you know, and they've got to take their Dramamine because, you know, you jerk the camera and then, you know, they, they felt like they were going to throw up on you. So this was, you know, not everything works. <laughs> this was a good idea. I don't think it worked very well. Okay. <laughs> so Brian, um, just, oh, sorry, Lauren, it's Megan here. I just wanted to say you're right. We did chat about, you know, how, what level to pitch this particular webinar at. So we went a bit broader knowing that not everyone's going to go the hardcore VR sort of route, but I'm, you know, seeing interest in that. So that could be something we can maybe look at in the fall, right, is to now part two of this, 
So we've got the like more practical things most of us could access and use mm -hmm. uh, to be more engaging um, sort of virtually. But, um, you know, let's, yeah, let's bookmark that as maybe a deeper topic. Okay, um, cool. And then, and then, and then Megan, um, I'm also seeing a lot of questions around um, equipment setup uh, and, and that kind of thing. So to me that, that Brian, it's up to you, but to me, maybe that's something we can follow up with on after the Yeah, yeah, definitely. So let me do a, so Brooke brought up a really good point, and I want to talk about that right now because that's that's really important. Um, it can it can be um, it can be a trap to fall into technology for technology's sake. Um, what I should what I would say is that technology should support the process, um, not get in the way of it. Um, technology should be seamless, uh, and it should not be um, uh, more of a challenge in order to get a group to collaborate then it is naturally because let's face it as facilitators we have a lot of group dynamics that we have to deal with um, and the last thing that we need is for the technology to be um, a road bump uh, or an obstacle to getting into it um, so you have to gauge the technological savvy of your participants and clients very carefully when you're suggesting any of these things um, that goes back to that initial model that I drew where it's like, okay, here's the things that are light versus the things that are heavy, the things that are expensive versus the things that are free. Um, gauge the, 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 the technological savvy of your clients to see you know, what they actually have the tolerance for. I have some clients that love doing virtual reality, okay, and jumping into the VR environment and, and, and meeting all in, in all spaces like, hey, here you are. And again, the more that you do it, the easier it becomes. I have others where it's like, now we, you know, for us, virtual facilitation is a conference call and we're watching you on your screen, Brian, right? So that's why I drew it as a spectrum. You really have to figure out what makes the most sense for your clients so that you're not thinking about the technology. Your focus should be on the group process. It should be on the dynamic that's happening between the people um, and not the technology, okay? So I'll get off my soapbox now, but that's I, I really feel strongly about that. The technology should enable. It shouldn't be technology for technology's sake in any case, okay? Um, so now that I'm off my soapbox, I'm looking at a couple of other, I said, so Karen suggested Google Dream Viewer. Very cool. So another VR set, which is pretty neat. Um, Mo asked a question about my setup. Totally curious about your hardware setup that I can see on your video. What is the tablet that you have on your left, right, uh, versus your main screen? Okay, so this is a 22-inch Cintiq. Um, it's, a, it's a Cintiq Wacom tablet. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's one of the top of the line uh, drawing tablets that's out there. Um, and one of the things that you can do with it is, let's say that I'm, I'm um, in the middle of working with a, a group, is that just even in, uh, in PowerPoint, um, using those draw tools, um, you can just quickly, you know, draw whatever it is you need to, you know. Um, and it's that fast. Now, if, again, if you, if you like to pull graphics in, if you like to do a little bit of drawing, um, I think that this is the way to go. Um, there's a lot of other Cintiqs and monitors that are out there that um, you have to, that are not necessarily connected to a screen, right? There might be like a black monitor or a tablet that sits down here, but then you're drawing here and looking up there and I just, you know, again, the, the technology has to be transparent. So this is a, a 22 inch Cintiq. Um, they make them bigger than this, they make them smaller than this. Uh, what I would say is, is that if you want to experiment with a tablet, play around with an iPad. Right, play around with a Microsoft Surface. So Amy, I'm seeing some thumbs up. It's not, by the way, it's nice to get a little bit of you know visual cues from the group. So thanks for that, Amy. Um, play around with an iPad. There's some amazing tools that are out there um, that are uh, get you down the path of of, uh, of digital uh, graphic facilitation and graphic recording. Um, <laughs> Nancy says you could do it with a mouse. You could. <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know. Yeah. It might be a little painful. I, I couldn't do it with a mouse. If you can do it with a mouse, you're like a ninja. I couldn't do that. Abby has a question. Could you work on Zoom from your tablet at the same time? Or is it better to have two separate devices? Yes. So that's actually what I'm doing right now. So this is, you know, I'm zooming off of this, off of the tablet. Um, and I just happen to have a separate screen as a monitor here. Um, bamboo pads. Okay, that's a good question. So bamboo pads, those are those ones that you can't necessarily see what it is that you're drawing. There's a disconnect between what your hand is doing and what you're doing, uh, what you're actually drawing on. So for that reason, I couldn't get used to it because I have to, you know, as if I was drawing with a pen, I gotta be able to see what I'm drawing. Um, so I just couldn't get used to it. I have it, I have it right here. This is my bamboo tablet. If you're interested, I'll mail it to you. <laughs> you can try it out. 
first come first serve on that one okay I don't use the thing that's that's my point okay um, and then from Abby, Amy, uh, Abby again, your tablet is input through a cable. Yes, this is just like having another monitor, okay? So it's just like as if you had set up dual screen, um, that plus one USB connection so that it registers the input. That's all you need for a Cintiq, okay? Cool, yeah, all right, so this is another thing. So Nancy, thanks for bringing this up. I'm gonna turn off my monitor for a sec, or the, the share for a second. When I'm doing virtual facilitation, I'm always doing this if I've got my camera on at all, okay? Um, in fact, if you can see my, uh, my, my webcam that I use, I have a couple of googly eyes on it just so that there's a, a visual cue for me to look at, okay? The reason that I've set it up sideways like this is because I figured that a few of you might want to see what the setup is and what it looks like. Um, I often don't have uh, a camera on. Um, number one, Sometimes I do this in my pajamas. I had actually thought to like do this in my pajamas today, but I just didn't get around to it, right? Um, I mean, because really, that's the great thing about virtual facilitation. Um, the second thing is, is that it can put a pressure on other people um, to also feel like they have their cameras on. And, and I think that you don't, you don't have to do that depending on what, what it is. Um, I don't do a whole lot of, uh, of uh, virtual facilitation with a webcam on. Okay, so thanks for asking that question. I appreciate it. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. Let me get a few more. And then if there's other questions, I'll get back to those in a minute. Back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so here's a couple of resources for you. Um, well, actually, no, let's do one more um, Google Sheet. So let me go ahead and, and put this one in. So I saw that a lot of folks uh, had had some experience in virtual facilitation. Yeah, here we go. So I saw that there was a, as we looked at that bell curve um, of the people who have been doing virtual facilitation, um, that there was a lot of folks that were to the right of, uh, of the bell curve. So if you would, please join me on the Google Sheets, um, and I'd like to hear from you. What are some of your favorite tools? Um, and again, if you are uh, on cruise control for this, I'll go ahead and share my, my screen so that you can observe and see what other people are typing. So before you add a tool, just make sure that it's not already on the list over to the left. Um, these, are the ones, these are the ones that I've already covered. Um, some of them I haven't. But you know you can look at it. Don't feel like you have to fill out everything. Um, yeah, and I'm seeing some people already starting to add down to the bottom. Gives you more screen real estate, definitely. Mm -hmm. Slack is a great one. I love the uh, like the team component of Slack. Um, yeah, it's really great. The, the other thing and I didn't realize this until recently about Slack is that you can actually use it for sharing documents. Um, yep, exactly. Yep. Lately, the new doc, the Google Doc integration is awesome. I couldn't agree more. I don't know who wrote that. That's fantastic. Um, the nice thing about Slack is, is that it's, I think it's a cure to um, email, <laughs> if you can believe that. So it keeps all of your messages around relevant topics in one place. Not only that, you can go back and find um, the actual documents uh, that have been sent back and forth without digging through, you know, piles of, in, of, uh, of emails in order to get things done. Yeah, so S. L, I'm gonna say it's SL Goodwin says, uh, can we get a copy of this sheet? Um, I'm gonna leave all of these links on. Uh, so if you have participated and um, you wanna to continue to have access to this, yes, this is not gonna go away. Um, if you're on cruise control, if you've opted not to log into this, um, I'll uh, download each one of these and um, uh, include it as a link in however we share this uh, afterwards. Megan, Megan, is that okay? <laughs> Are you all right with that? Sorry, I'm, tr I'm troubleshooting emails, so I got sidetracked. But no I'm sure whatever you said is, is perfectly fine. We'll so I said, is it, is it okay to, like, with, with some of these documents, we'll, we'll be able to share them after the, uh, the webinar, right? Yeah, I think really it's whatever you're open to sharing, right? Because you're, fortunately, we're really lucky this time that you're managing it all on your side. So uh, I, think, um, I, think, I think whatever is manageable to sort of download and have in a shareable format, I'm more than happy to include that for sure. Cool. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, co-vision, I'm seeing large and small group discussions, polls, Q&A. Yeah, that's, to me, that's, that's the thing that I really like about Zoom. Um, you can do pretty much all of the same stuff that I'm, I'm seeing there. Yep, you do have high touch and tech support with CoVision, uh, and it's really, but it's really expensive. So if you can navigate around Zoom, um, then yeah. Okay, so I, I see a couple of questions. So Abby asked if the Grove strategic visioning templates are available virtually. Um, virtually no, digitally yes. And so they actually, uh, you can uh, go to their website, 
and they will give you, uh, you can order uh, the CD. Um, I think it's a CD, it's a CD, DVD. It's probably a DVD wrong now. I don't know. When I got it, it was a CD wrong. Um, where you can get digital PowerPoint versions of their templates. So this is a big caveat, an important one. Just because you have the digital version of, uh, of uh, a Grove template, or any template for that matter, that does not give you the, um, the license to be able to hit print and reproduce them. So they're very careful about that. But if you have it digitally, um, like on their CD, that does mean that you can do like, as, a, as we demonstrated here with their spot analysis, you can use it um, uh, with a group in a PowerPoint. Mm, this is really cool. Yeah, mural.com. That's a cool one. I almost did mural.com in lieu of doing um, board thing. Um, they're pretty close to one another. I say mural.com actually, .co. Uh, actually, is it .com or .co? I'll have to check that. Um, but it's very similar to what you can do with board thing. Um, and I don't know why I made that choice. Mural.com is actually a little bit better, I think. Um, it may not have that same lag that, uh, that Brooke pointed out. .co, thanks for that. Thanks for Tivo. Abby asks, um, I don't think everyone can enter into a Grove template at the same time if it's on your PowerPoint. Okay, so good point. So you can do like what I did. Yep, Lauren pointed it out. You can do like what I did where you can take the image, drop it onto a Google slide, and then have others um, type into it. Um, and again, the easiest way to do any of this uh, is to just share your screen um, and have people either contribute uh, in chat or they just speak if you've got a, a small enough group. Uh, and there's not, you know, 50 people on the phone. You could just have them speak, and you could just play the role of recorder and type what it is that they have to say. Okay, I'm seeing some great stuff in here. Thank you for adding to this. I'm really excited. I don't know most of these tools. I can't wait to dive into them and see what else they might bring into it. Could you do this without your headphones? Yes, I could. I really like the the microphone that I've got. I think it adds to it. Um, and. You know, I just like the sound quality that I get over the the, the headphones better. Um, I found that sometimes when I uh, use my my speakers, um, that there can be a bit of an echo uh, that will will somehow work its way in. And I look cool. I wouldn't go that far. I look like I'm ready to play World of Warcraft, um, but I definitely do not look cool. So thanks for that. Bro. All right. So I'm going to stop the share. Please keep typing in this because this is great stuff and I can't wait to, just for my own personal learning to dive into this later. Um, but I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. And let me give you a few more resources. Okay. So if you would like to know more, um, the place to go, the number one place to go uh, is to um, take the facilitating virtual collaboration class um, with Rachel Smith. Rachel Smith is the guru of virtual facilitation. She's the best that there is. She's writing a book. It's going to come out soon. Very excited to see what that's all about. Um, I mean, she's like what David Sibbett is to graphic facilitation or, you know, Doyle and Strauss are to facilitation. You know, she is to virtual facilitation. She knows everything there is to know about virtual facilitation. If you really want to geek out on this uh, and um, learn more, uh, uh, go to Rachel Smith. Everything that I know about virtual facilitation I got from her um, in a three-day course or a five-day course. So I, I, can't, I can't stress or recommend that enough. Um, a few other things. So she actually uh, co-teaches a course called Virtual Team Facilitation, which is specifically around working with teams, um, with Marsha Acker. That's another one to take a look at. Her blogs are phenomenal. Um, again, if you're into this, just sign up. You know, she's, she doesn't spam. Um, and she's really, really keen on sharing uh, methods, methods, methods. Speaking of methods, so I showed off a little bit of the growth strategic visioning templates. Um, so those are out there. You saw the digital version of them. The image here, this is the paper version of them. Um, and I still like to use the paper version uh, for planning purposes. I'll just deal these out like a deck of cards with a client and say, okay, we're going to do this, 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 and this. Um, and then, you know, finally, sorry about this shameless plug. Um, I share as many methods as I can on my blog, which is uh, Think With Ink, okay? And that's on my website. Also, feel free to reach out to me for anything. Um, I'm Brian at lizardbrainsolutions.com. Um, I love helping people out when it comes to approach design, answering questions, coming up with ideas. Um, I'm kind of a methods junkie, as Lauren will tell you. I collect, you know, uh, facilitation methods like most people collect um, uh, baseball cards. Uh, and it's just fun for me to see what all is, is out there. So it's a lot of fun for me. Okay, so moving on, the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to do one more process check and tell me how it went. Um, so on your phone, on your smartphone, 
Um, or again, if you wanted to use your, your browser for this, uh, you could go to menti.com, and that is M-E-N-T-I, I is an indigo.com, and use the code 188684. I'll go ahead and shift the view. And there's a couple of questions to this, okay? So um, one of the things you can do with Mentimeter is that you can actually set up several questions. So I'd like to, what would you like to have seen more of? Uh, what is it you'd like to see the less of? It's always a good follow-up. Uh, less virtual reality, peace, fair enough. <laughs> Not everybody like that. Uh, and then finally, any comments that would be helpful for the, the next time that I do a session like this? Brian, it's Megan here. I'm really liking this partly because I'm reflecting, so I'll turn my video on too. Um, you know, we do the standard survey monkey and we'll still send you guys that. So mm -hmm. we still hope you'll fill that in just from our tracking. But this feels like the survey monkey, we don't get everybody, right? People get busy, they get sidetracked. And so, you know, and we've talked about as a group at math and of a way to get this more real time feedback. So. I feel like uh, math and co-host, I'm gonna fly, I flag it for us to think about and Mozon too, you know, could we add this in maybe in February rather than our typical survey monkey link thing, so. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, well and we sometimes it, get eight out of 40, you know, people responding and it just, I mean, it's useful. We're glad for those that respond, but it's not quite the same as getting almost everybody's feedback in the moment, so. Yep, I appreciate that. So it's always fun when you when you get feed and I know you guys are giving feedback. So this is really bad form. I apologize for that. But here it goes. Um, so it's really funny when I, I like to see, uh, you know, what would you like to have seen more of resources? What would you like to see less of resources? So it's like, okay, you know, I'm, you can't make everybody happy all the time. So <laughs> Very cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. So we're it's at uh, 118 right now. Um, I would just say that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to share with you. Uh, again, we'll make all of the, the resources available to you um, and the results of all of your collaboration. Thank you so much for everything that you contributed. I can't wait to dive into some of those resources myself to see what, uh, what you all added to it. Um, I'm happy to hang out if anybody has got some um, additional direct questions about how they might uh, want to bring in some virtual facilitation. Sound good? And if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, that's fine. Uh, if you want to um, go ahead and put it into the chat window, I'll be keeping an, an eye on that too. And Brian, it's Megan. Why don't I just do my, can you do my, uh, quickly let me share my screen. Let me do my little closing bit and then that way you can just take uh, questions, you know, discussion uh, where you where you want after that. Sure. Uh, we can actually both share our screens at the same time. Ooh, so you, you, yeah. you can go ahead and do that. All right. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. I don't use Zoom in this way, so it's been a really great learning curve for that. Uh, oh, I, I did, I shared the wrong view, but that, this will suffice. Um, so just a reminder to do the survey, I will also copy that into the chat in a second, or someone else may be already doing it. Um, now it says here one to two weeks for the link and the recording, so Brian has graciously offered to help with this, because obviously the editing of a session like this is going to be um, very different. Uh, so we'll maybe need a couple more weeks than normal, but just know that we will get you the information. Um, and also, again, uh, just a reminder uh, is that we do have this great session coming up in February. Um, so that was really it, Brian. I, I already unshared there. I just wanted to remind everyone of that. And yeah, and I think great timing now for a few people who have some more specific questions. Or Lauren, if you noticed any questions or, or things that came up that we didn't cover, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give it back to you guys and uh, sort of say a thank you from the math and team for running this. And I just spotlighted um, Lauren's gorgeous sketch notes. Lauren, thank you so much for doing that. I don't know how you were able to do tech support um, and sketch noting at the same time. Those are like mad skills. Very cool. Lola. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting some people having trouble seeing the sketch note on the larger screen. Is there any way to, to fix that, Brian? Or tell people how to do it? Oh. You can pin the video. Just right right click on the sketch note, Cam. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Megan, how many people are still online? Uh forty one, and that's of course the hosts and stuff too, but Yeah. C consider if you can push Brian's arm. Um, in doing a series of webinars, much like we a few years ago had a series in the use of um, 
graphic facilitation that was done by uh, Deirdre. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so let me give you actually a resource for that. Um, so, so thank you for pointing that out. So uh, Lauren and I are part of a, a meetup group that's called Nova Scribes. Um, and I'll, um, Lauren, if you don't mind, maybe you can put a link to that in the, in the chat. Um, but we do, uh, it's, it's intended for visual practitioners, which is to say graphic recording and graphic facilitation. Um, and, you know, we, we pretty much break even on that one. We typically charge like 15 bucks, uh, which is about as much as it takes in order to, to actually run a meetup group. Um, and it's not just, you know, the Brian and Lauren show. There's, there's, we're always inviting guests to come in to do, uh, for example, visual coaching. I think we've got one coming up on human centered design. There's another one where we're going to do Lego serious play. Um, and so that, that would be a way and we, we do it online and we also do it, um, locally out in the Chantilly area. So if you're interested, yep. Lauren shared human centered design. We're going to do that on February 15th. Um, so that's, uh, that's out there and as a resource. Thanks, Brian. That's a, um, group I'll look into. Sure. Not to, and, and I should quickly say, not to take any, you know, thunder away from Maffin. I mean, Maffin is still, I mean, that's, that's where you go for the, you know, I, I get so much out of going to Maffin. Um, the Nova Scribes is, is intentionally for graphic facilitators and graphic recorders. Um, and although I'd love to teach it all the time at Maffin, I think you'd get kind of sick of it. <laughs> over I was going to say, that's always the challenge, right? Because as, as, most of you know, and John, you know, definitely because you've been involved in presenting is, you know, we have limited sort of time, right, to sort of, and we want to produce a sort of variety of webinars, but I've definitely learned some tricks today about, or, and, 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 and ways to do something more dynamic with Zoom, um, maybe bringing Brian back, doing, if we can focus on certain things if there's the interest, right, it's just mm -hmm. at, but um, I, I think that that group is a great way if you want to dig deeper, and Nancy, what are you holding up, learn, Connect. I have too small. I have to learn the big thing. But Nancy's holding up. Learn, connect, connect. There we Kismet. go. Kismet. Kismet. There it is. I see it now. Hey, Megan. Yep. Um, interesting about to continue the thought about deeper dives versus um, broader view. I just was participating in a couple um, presentations we did over a period of months with a different group um, about interactive games for um that work across cultures and the first one we did was basically a broad cover of five or six different tools the second one we did was actually a deep dive on one very experiential and then a debrief so it's a combination of teaching and experiencing um the difference i think is well there's value in both but we found there's significantly more value in having a deep dive with time on one to actually go through both teaching it and experiencing it so people get both sides and then debriefing it both as you would as a practitioner mm -hmm. and then debriefing it from the group perspective of how do we use it, how do we learn from it, what are the tidbits? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be that we could start and I know as a team we're trying to get more of a system to make it easier on us as well uh, with the, that maybe we do one or two of those a year, you know, of the, of our eight, you know, and, and that way it's not clogging up the system, but you are giving that real experience. So definitely some good food for thought. I don't know if any of the other co-hosts or anyone else wants to chime in. Um, so we have a few more minutes too, if anyone had any specific questions for Brian or even Lauren as well as the, um, you see the, the importance of the producer type role in the background is even more important in these kind of more dynamic environments. Yeah, I mean, it, it is really good to have a technical facilitator. Now, Brian, I'll say, almost doesn't need it um, because he is really good at monitoring. You you saw it, like, there are a ton of questions, and he was monitoring and doing everything almost all at once. So, um, so he's very, like, I'm... I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but like you're very good at that. Um, so, but it is good to have um, someone else to support you. And the role of that person is to, is to hold the space virtually, you know, to, to, do, um, to do some technical uh, work, but then also monitor chat, uh, keep track of questions, um, at times uh, privately chat. This didn't happen on this call, but to privately chat if somebody is maybe being a little disruptive. <laughs> so, so that's a thing. Um, so it's just, it's just really helpful um, to take the pressure off of the facilitator to have to do both, um, to have a second person. Yeah. We're, we're lucky, we're a pretty polite group. I think our regular math and attendees. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're provocative, but they're but all within professional uh, boundaries. So, well, I think I'll say you know at this point, just more from a point of view of the recording, is that we can sort of end the uh, recording and say that we're all finished. Sure. Um, people can feel free to start signing off. Uh, Brian, if you have a minute, usually his co-host will stay on to just debrief a bit. And I know Mo and John sometimes hang around as other presenters. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, thank you everyone again for attending. And we'll sort of formally end the event there.